I just asked a simple question. Really, did I? Let's get right down, down to it. What did I ask? A simple question. Why are we not looking into those things? If we're going to talk about it. Why are we not looking into those things? This is Washington Commander's Defensive Coordinator Jack Del Rio, who is defending the January 6 insurrectionists. Because it's kind of hard for me to say I can realistically look at it. I see the images on TV. People's livelihoods are being destroyed. Businesses are being burned down. No problem. And instead, invoking the 2020 summer protests with the same Fox News OAN talking point, which we will debunk momentarily. And then we have a dust up at the Capitol. Well, there's no nothing burned down. And we're not going to talk about, we're going to make that a major deal. You heard it from his mouth. The January 6th insurrection was a dust up, according to Jack Del Rio. He then lazily attempted to clear the air, but failed. I stand by my comments condemning violence in communities across the country. I say that while also expressing my support for peaceful protests in our country. I have fully supported all peaceful protests in America. He supports all peaceful protests. So when this guy took a silent, peaceful knee, Del Rio was in favor, right? Wrong. You're representing our organization, and our organization believes that you should pay respect to the flag. Save those individual decisions to express yourself for an individual forum, Del Rio said in 2016. It's always been understood, he added. You stand attention. You pay respect to our flag, our country. That's always been kind of an assumed thing. In favor of peaceful protests, right? Then why wouldn't he be in favor of the protests in the summer of 2020? A Washington Post analysis found based on the 7,305 events they collected, the overall levels of violence and property destruction were low and most of the violence that did take place was in fact directed against the BLM protesters. Knowing Del Rio will use the back the blue jargon, the post-analysis went further. Police were reported injured in 1% of the protests. A law enforcement officer killed in California was allegedly shot by supporters of the far-right Boogaloo movement, not anti-racism protesters. The killings in the line of duty of other law enforcement officers during this period were not related to the protests. Why doesn't Del Rio note any of this? Why doesn't he mention Umbrella Man, who police identified as belonging to a white supremacist group? This dude caused destruction to a local auto zone. No comment from Coach. How about in Richmond, where white supremacists disguised themselves as BLM protesters who tore down police tape and pushed forward toward Richmond Police Headquarters, where they set a city dump truck on fire? Maybe it's because when someone tweeted, black people are begging agents of the state to stop executing them, Del Rio replied, uh, yeah, sure. In San Diego, white supremacists pretended to host a protest to honor George Floyd on Facebook to whip up violence. Others in the area were warned not to go because it was a white supremacist organized rally. Where's Del Rio when it comes to Ivan Harrison Hunter, a member of the extremist Boogaloo Boys who traveled across state lines to shoot at police precincts while yelling justice for Floyd. As a matter of fact, leaked docs from former President Trump's own DHS analysts issued an open source intelligence report detailing how a white supremacist channel on Telegram, an encrypted messaging service, was encouraging followers to capitalize on the unrest by targeting the police with Molotov cocktails and firearms. So why did Del Rio call January 6th a dust-up while simultaneously being over the top in his criticism of the 2020 protests? Journalist and author Howard Bryant has a thought. However, seeing the radicalization that Del Rio has undertaken, I think it's wise to understand who he is because he has left a trail of warning signs on his social media. What grabbed everyone's attention was this tweet. Would love to understand the whole story about why the summer of riots, looting, burning, and the destruction of personal property is never discussed, but this is hashtag common sense. Author Dave Zyron responded, which I agree with, because it wasn't a summer of riots, looting, burning, and the destruction of personal property. That you think it was speaks volumes. And his history tells us exactly who he is. Del Rio quote tweets Charlie Kirk. 
promotes Dinesh D'Souza, approves the grooming messaging Republicans have spouted for the last six months, retweets Nazi-loving conspiracy theorist Jack Posobiec, who is no longer allowed on Bumble, and who the Southern Poverty Law Center found has collaborated with white supremacists, neo-fascists, and anti-Semites for years, while producing propaganda that Trump and his inner circle have publicly celebrated. Del Rio thinks critical race theory is the real problem, supporting Burgess Owens' banning of it for political points. He also puts his stamp of approval on the Epoch Times, a pro-Trump and only pro-Trump outlet that masquerades as a credible newspaper with only one goal, becoming the OAN slash Newsmax of digital print media. He wrote of Jason Whitlock, Appreciate your work, Jason. You inspire many souls to seek the truth. Del Rio is against gun control, liking this form of messaging, which follows every single Republican's messaging. You know, we need less woke and more Christianity BS. He likes articles like this one that read, Jim Jordan in plain language calls out Democrats about being the party of intimidation. He takes in the Blazes content, specifically noted bigot Glenn Beck. He appreciates women who love guns as much as they love pooping their pants or sitting in traffic then turning around like the trucker convoy. He supports an alleged pedo Matt Gates is messaging a Clarence Thomas, labeling him a national treasure. He likes far-right grifter Candace Owens, mini Ann Coulter Tommy Lauren, and time and time again, oh boy does he love him some Ron DeSantis. He supports politicians going after private businesses because freedom of speech, am I right? Also, no surprise, big Brandon guy, appreciates pro-insurrectionist Carrie Lake, big Herschel Walker guy who thinks healthcare is bad and panders to the blame illegals rhetoric. But maybe this is the icing on the cake. He believes Donald Trump and his family have committed no crimes whatsoever, whereas the real problem is or uh, Hunter Biden. Lastly, when Joe Rogan spewed misinformation, as he usually does, Del Rio liked Jason Whitlock's tweet of nonsense with the conclusion of it being, if you believe, and you can see the tweet of what, you also believe 1-6 was an insurrection.